Hello and welcome to the i3 lecture series hosted by the Masters of Digital Photography here at the School of Visual Arts. I'm Julie Graham. Welcome back. I hope the students and faculty and the rest of you had a good break. We are fortunate to have Leslie Jean Bart speaking on this chilly night for Leslie warms my heart and I think he will warm yours too. I hope so. Uh, Leslie's photographs have been widely exhibited over the years and they have won multiple awards. Um, the art world is kind of about connections and maintaining contact. I met Leslie several years ago at a portfolio review and he's been very good at keeping in touch with me. <laughs> Today I had lunch with Grayson Danzig who's here and I just found out, uh, well I know Grayson through Mary Engel who was one of our speakers from the last semester. So there's one connection. Um, and Grayson's father was also a photographer, Jerry Danzig. And Jerry taught at Columbia Graduate School, of Journalism. Graduate School of Photojournalism. And in the 80s, Leslie was Grayson's dad's teaching assistant. <laughs> so how about that? Well Leslie jean -Bart. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction, Julie. Thank you as well to each, even every one of you, for uh, coming here this evening. You certainly could have chosen to be somewhere else. <laughs> so your presence is very much appreciated. Uh, as was mentioned in the introduction, my name is Leslie Jambar. The adversity I faced gave me a gift. It pushed me to Coney Island, where for a decade, I worked in my series, Reality and Imagination. And it is this series that will be the main focus of this evening's presentation. My aim is to show uh, the structure that went into the making of that series. But first, a quick background. At the age of six or so, when I started to swim in the ocean, I quickly became aware that the ocean has the ability to uh, remove me from the place I am and transport me to a place that is very calm and comfortable. Ill prepared and every way conceivable to be my mother's caregiver, the ocean at Coney Island became the refuge that would lead me to the uh, essence of reality imagination, all the meanwhile grinding me mentally and physically so I may continue being my mother's caregiver for approximately 15 years. Reality and imagination, the silhouette and shadow sections. A silhouette or a shadow depends on light to exist. The same type of relationship exists as well between the immigrant seeking a better life and the country or the land. In reality and imagination, I use the movement of the tide and sand to visually explore the interaction that takes place between the host country and the immigrant living there. So the silhouette and shadow are the main elements used to move that concept or that idea forward. Uh, first off, I should say as well that uh, all of the images presented here this evening are single shots done in camera and composed entirely on location. Photographing uh, in between the tide and the sand is beyond challenging. I quickly, became, I, I quickly come to realize that it requires that I as well be absolutely present mentally and physically. So being present mentally and physically permit me to compose and create the images needed. For example, as in this, uh, this image, if I had uh, only if this image were only this area here, it would have been interesting. But adding the second shadow permit the image to speak with a uh, depth that would not have been possible otherwise. It was never a matter of simply photographing silhouette and shadow, but more so a matter of putting a way of seeing at the service of an ID. The idea being the uh, visual exploration of the interaction between the culture, between the, uh, the host country and the immigrants living there. 
this way of seeing is composed of two parts. The first part, of course, is the silhouette and shadow, for the reason I mentioned before. The second part is the frame of mind that permitted me to see, to accept, and to use the movement of the tide and sand as a screen in which to project and develop the idea in question. Photoshop is used in what I call an analog frame of mind. What I mean by that is, Photoshop is used within all the limits we faced when we were using film and didn't have access to uh, easily retouching. So Photoshop is used to uh, remove a spot in the sensor to clean the print. Uh, in the same way that uh, as uh, in film, using film, we would use a spot tone to remove a piece of dirt or that may be in the, uh, in the, in the negative on the film. Uh, anyone who doesn't know what the spot tone is, I have a bottle here <laughs> that you can see what it is. Uh, you use it with a small brush and a bit of spit. Because that's what I thought, yeah. That's how I was taught to use it. So if you don't know, you can take a look at the end. Photoshop is used as well to increase or decrease the contrast of the print. In the same way, uh, you making prints, uh, you use uh, number one paper or one half uh, filter for multi-grade paper for the lower end, or four and five uh, paper for the uh, higher contrast. Working in a long project, it's very really easy to lose track as to what it is that you're looking for. As a safeguard, I would give myself some close, uh, some loose directive. And those directives uh, help me to stay focused. At the same time, it affects the kind of uh, images that I create as well. The previous, the previous set looks quite different than those images coming now. Do I move the image too fast or too slow? Reality and imagination, a unit of two. In this set, I combined two single images to create what I call a unit. And it was very important to me that you can see <coughs> this thing between the two, between the two images. Uh, where the idea comes from is that uh, the first generation immigrant children, because they live in two cultures at the same time, there is a duality that involved there. And uh, this mix of the two cultures can be as troublesome within as it is in the society at large. So I was trying in a sense to, to address that to an extent and uh, expand from there. Working on a long-term project, it goes to different stages, all part of the process. At one, at one point, I thought I would uh, express the idea through abstraction. And that's a bit more images from there.
it did not take me long to realize that approaching it through abstraction would not have worked because it would mean that I had to explain a lot. And the words would become more important than the image. And I think that the photography is a visual medium and it should speak first visually and the other around. Oh, sorry, yeah. Then I thought about doing it more figuratively. Time and Timing is the, the first series I started after my mother passed away. Uh, the idea of time was very much in my mind all the time. Um, wondering about how much time I have left. Uh, wondering if I'm using my time properly, if I'm not wasting it. So it was in my mind all the time. So I decided to use that, that approach as a series. I think I raced through it. I don't know about you guys, but I'm not sure you're going to get away with not telling us a little bit more, maybe, about how you make them. Um, we've got lots of time for questions. So, questions, comments? Yes. Hi, how are you, sir? Thank you for the Thank presentation. You. Looks very, very nice. Um, I have a question. First, are all the photos taken in um, Coney Island? Yes, all are. of them? Yes. Oh wow. Yeah. And the second question: uh, Have you thought about doing there the same thing or like different aspect, but kind of the same project around places around the world? Because I come from a country where we have a lot of beaches, and I would love to see what you can do, like over well, there, for example? It, it's something I've thought about, but I've not had the opportunity. So okay. if, uh, if you give me some info, I'll... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's a road trip. Um, first, I love this work. It's, Thank you. It's absolutely extraordinary. Um, uh, I... I, I don't want to assume, but do you make prints of the work? Yes, some of the prints, yes. And I, like, I'm trying to imagine how big the prints are. Uh, the biggest I've made them is, uh, I think, 22 by, by 30, is it? 
Somewhere like that. Seven, Pardon se me? 17 by 22, a bit bigger. That's pretty good size. Yeah. Because yeah. um, they would work differently. They work at many different sizes, I can imagine. Yeah, and yeah. That, it looks um, quite different in different and, sizes. And the other, and when you print them, do they have as much, it's, I'm not sure this is the right way to ask it, but do they have as much contrast and 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 saturation as you're getting up here on the screen? Yes, they do. Because the color in them is just astonishing yeah, they do. to me. They do. They do. Um, there's really subtle gradations of color, and there's also really bright colors, and um, the 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 things just kind of light up in a really interesting way to me that I don't see that often, okay. and okay. and I think they're really beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. And also, I, I apologize for racing through it, but I guess. Uh, I vouch for the prints. <laughs> uh, this was, can you hear me? Uh, this is more for the recording. Oh, so sorry, okay. Sorry, uh, so this, no worries. Um, this was uh, inspired and poetic, and I love the meaning that they had for you. Thank you so much for sharing them. Um, I have so many questions, I'm going to limit them, but. Um, who are the people in them? Are they all strangers? Uh, I, it was obviously day and night, it seemed. And how long uh, did, you know, how many years was this series? And lastly, you seem to, I detected maybe a hesitancy about admitting that there was some Photoshop element to it. I'm wondering if that in some way, like, m makes them less uh, uh, real or, or, I don't know, less something for you that you had to say that. I'm just curious. No. Okay, so, no. so did, you, did you get all of that? Uh, so, no, 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 I didn't mean it like that, but I'll no. repeat the question if Yes, necessary. please, yes, please, yeah. All right, yeah. Let's, have the, yeah. let's have your phone. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Okay, so the people are all strangers. Is yes, the they're all strangers. one of the questions. Day and night, right? And you're photographing at day and night? Ooh, well, during the summertime, I guess, do you call 7 p.m. night? I mean, no, so not after dark. Still it's, it's still light out. So. Um, how many years? Yeah, how many? So how many years have you actually been making the work now? It's over a decade. So about twelve years. I think about twelve years. Yeah. That's, That's it. Long. That's short. Sure. What was the next one? Uh, oh, Photoshop. Oh, Photoshop. The, the, yeah, the, the, the gentleman thought you were a little reluctant to, to say that you were employing Photoshop. No, in no, some way. That, it's not that at all. It's just that that was a rule I, I made for myself. Uh, that was the idea to approach it in a way without using Photoshop. The only concession I made to Photoshop was using the sharpening tool. But beyond that, you know, that's, that was just purely my own. It's not that I'm against Photoshop. It's just that for this series, I didn't want to use Photoshop. That's simple as that. Thank you. Do you want to put a different light up there? I could not do it as film because with film, it would have been quite different because at least I can check what's going on with a, with a digital camera. I have a sense of what's happening because the, the, tide moves, the tide moves very fast. So mm -hmm. I needed to gauge to see where I am so I could do uh, uh, do you tend to shoot at a certain time of day because it does the lighting sort of seems to be consistently uh, in order to reflect into the waves or are you and it's you you said something about 7 p.m. Oh, I'm saying uh, shooting time. No, I, I, sh I, I would go to Coney Island at times from uh, by the time the sun rises and I would leave after it goes down. So it doesn't matter to me in that sense. Oh, so this was all day all day long. Whenever I see an image, I can make it, yes. It is not a matter of time at all. Um, I did not restrict it that way at all. At first, I thought about that, but I, I realized it doesn't serve my purpose. It's a question of dealing with what is and create an image from there, and it will improve what I have quite a lot as well. So you would be there from sunrise to sunset yes. on a particular day? Yeah, yeah, when I can, yes. Just wow. walk, walk up and down. Yeah. I was in good shape. <laughs> Two questions. First of all, I love the work. Thank you. Absolutely stunningly beautiful. Um, would you tell us more about the motivation behind the work? You, you touched on it a little bit about taking care of your mom. But will you share with us? Because photography is so personal, and this is such a personal body of work. Just whatever you're comfortable with. I think that would touch a lot of hearts. Well, as I mentioned before, and I, I'm not sure if I did or not because I, I, I lost my ear, but anyway. Um, uh, the ocean has a great impact on me, in a sense. Um, um, it's a place I can go and lose myself to an extent. If anything is bothering me, I can go there. I have a good chance that 
I feel better after I leave there. Depending on the day, how much is in my mind. Uh, it may take a bit longer. Uh, but basically, um, I mean, I think I did say that. I was, I was ill-prepared in every way conceivable to be a mother's caregiver. So the pressure and the stress was immense. Uh, so going to Coney Island was a way to uh, to save my sanity so I could continue being a mother caregiver. That's basically what it was. Um, that's why I would spend 12 hours. If, if she's okay and I don't have a job, which was quite difficult at the time because I was on call with her 24 hours a day almost, I'd just go to Coney Island and float and just take pictures and, and that's what I needed at the time um, for me to be, to be able to carry on in any shape or form. So that was my, uh, my shrink, my drug, whatever you want to call it, that's what I did, that's, that's the part. That, uh, and and it, it really, without this series, I honestly don't think that I, I would be here talking to anyone. Or if I am, mentally, mentally and physically, I would have been in a way different shape. That's, that's not, uh, um, um, and, and I, I can't say it more than that because it, it's, uh, it's really literally. Um, there are days where that's all I had, that's, 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 uh, because uh, with dementia, it's not the same person that knew from before. And they have days, you know, and there are days when, uh, well, after all, my mother raised me, my parents raised me, so she knew how to press, she, she, she knew, and she was good at that, so uh, there are days that I was, I was, uh, I was flipping out, so it's, it's, uh, um, yeah. I was really lucky and fortunate. I always say as well, that's the gift that she gave me for what I went through. <laughs> I told you he would warm your heart. Any other questions or comments, please? Yes. Thank you, Leslie. It's Thank beautiful. Uh, taking a totally different approach from the last question, I'd like to hear more about your process and your technique. In the beginning, I was trying to understand how you were getting some of the reflections without also having your reflection. Mm. Um, and maybe there were some, because there were some <clears throat> where it looked like two shadows or reflections. But then I came to the conclusion you must have been on the pier, but then I thought you couldn't be on the pier for everything. So I'd love to hear more about the process of being able to achieve those, um, those kinds of reflections with that uh, detail. The answer is really simple and so anyway, at least for me it is because I've been through it. But, um, during the period when I was my mother's caregiver, because of the pressure, I always had my head down. So I was very familiar with the upside down world. What you're looking at, this is upside down, right side up. So what I chose to do is to bring that whole, to bring my, my world that I knew at the time to the right world. And so it changed uh, the perspective. That's why it seems um, familiar mm -hmm. and unfamiliar at the same time. It's something because I flipped it. Mm -hmm. So I, I could not photograph myself and, and, and with, the, with the shadow because you will see my camera. It's, it's not that. It's purely, it's a change of plane. The upside down, you can right side up. Simple as that. Simple are approach, you, but. Are you standing out in the water when you're taking this? She's there. I'm here. Yeah, but are you, I mean, because it is upside down. Yeah, 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 so yeah of course, like yeah, yeah, because I'm here. Oh, you're down there? Not, not down, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, let, let, let's, let's see. I could do the girl, I could be the girl. Okay, yeah, all right, the, yeah, yeah. So, so I, I would facing be, the, facing away. I would be here. So I'm, sh because she's pointing, she's there, so I'm uh -huh. shooting down there this way. And which way is the beach? Right, it's yeah. behind you. Yeah, it's behind me in a sense, yeah, it's behind me in a sense. Um, or sometimes it can be in front, depending on what, what the shot is, but in this particular case, it's behind me. Yeah. <laughs> Did people, <coughs> people ever react when they saw that you were taking pictures um, of their shadow? I've learned to do it so fast, and that... Uh, um, and I've been there so, so often, people that I was a bit cuckoo, so they don't pay any attention to me. They, you know, they, know, they know who I am, so they know what I'm doing. They don't, they don't, uh, um, uh, so. Great. Yes. Would you pass that around? Thank you so much. 
Beautiful. Thank you. It's great to see so many of them all together. I've only seen small amounts yeah. of them at different times, so it's really nice to see the whole group. Um, is painting of any interest to you? There's a real painterly quality to a lot of them, and I'm wondering if um, you spend any time looking at painting to get inspired when you can? I do, I do. Uh, I thought you were asking me if I wanted to paint. Oh, no, uh, no, 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 no. Because my, 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 you should see my handwriting. <laughs> I think they all inform each other, you know, whether, whether it's painting, movies, um, it's all visual. It's a question of what you choose to absorb, what you find interesting. Um, it's all the same, they're all part of the same, at least for me it is. Anyone else? Ah. Any more for any more? I feel so bad that I had everything prepared. I rehearsed, you know, for two weeks. <laughs> and You're uh, perfect. And, uh, and I screwed it up, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now if the youth would like to go and visit the spot tone and the retouching brush before they leave, they're very welcome. Yeah, have, have the Any spot. last questions or comments for Leslie? No? Okay. Thank you. Oh, oh, we do, we do, we do. Well, so what's next? Uh, I have been spending a lot of time at uh, the print workshop, uh, Robert Blackburn. So I'm combining photography and printmaking now, which is a whole different. Um, not necessarily, no, they all knew, they all, they all new images I've made, uh, they're not, uh, um, I've been staying away from these for a while. They're not calling me anymore if you go to something else, but it doesn't mean I will not go back to them, but for now, um, they want me to stay away, so I stay away. <laughs> oh, uh, Oh, I've been going to the, uh, the, the Polo Bear Club, yes. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I wear uh, three pants. And I, have I don't like the cold, but it, I wanted to be there and do that. So I've done it all last, last winter. And that's part of the thing I've printed as well for the Blackburn workshop. It's not fun. I don't like the, the cold, don't like me. I don't like the cold, so I was really freezing. Another one. Hi, about how many photos do you think you got from the series? Over 500? Say that again. About how many photos do you think you have in the series? Over 500? Or a thousand? Uh, it's two different questions. Uh, how, how many I've shot, how many I have in the series? Because I, I'm not using all of them, but it, it's uh, over a period of 12 years. You can imagine I've shot quite a bit, I would say. Um, um, especially in that situation, you can't control it. You know? It's not something that it has gotten to a point there I could not dictate what I want because I've learned my lesson. Uh, you can't do that with nature if you try to dictate it, you know, you're going to get in trouble. Um, but I have, I have enough images that I can use to do whatever I need in that sense. You know, that that's Are you going to do a book? Um, I think somebody asked me before, hey, well, I should have put it. The book is done, but the way it's done, the price point would have been too high. So yeah. I have, the way I want it, you know, it was a combination of all the, the writing, what I went through, and how it affects or influences the images, and how also what I did at Kulian and affect my relationship with my mother in terms of, uh, because they both all inform each other in a sense. Because mm -hmm. one of the things I've learned at uh, Kulian is that, uh, one of the many lessons, is that there's a time to lead and a time to be led, and a time to, 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 and vice versa. I was able to take that to my mother in a sense that really made things a bit easier, because my mother was also very independent and strong, and, and when she cannot do what she wants, uh, she would take it out of me because it's normal. That, that's the, mm -hmm. So by giving her a bit of more freedom, in a sense, she kind of uh, let off the gas a bit, uh, and so we were able to communicate better and have a better relationship in that sense. So it was few fun. It was few. Yeah. Hi. When did you decide to, um, to, f to change from figur figures to uh, still life? Oh, what, what inspired you? What inspired you? Um, it's a question of where I was at the time and my thinking was going on, as well as what's going at home, my mother. You know, it's a mixture of a lot of things, uh, and, and and that affects what I see, or what I don't see, or what I'm reading. Um, whatever gives me an idea, I'll go for it. I don't think about it. I'll go. You, I explore it. If it doesn't work, but I still stay with it, then I'll push it aside. Something else comes up. Um, and the uh, abstract series there, there is one particular image. Uh, let's see. Uh, 
Oh, oh sorry, I know. Um, Yeah, yeah. Um, keep going. Let me see. That one. That one. This one, yeah. In many ways, this was the image that led me to the uh, silhouette and shadows. As I explore the abstractions, you know, that, that comes through. Um, that's why I say they all influence each other one way or the other. That, that, because I, I never know what I will learn from one or the other. And uh, again, working in that series for that long within that frame of mind, uh, nothing was out of reach. It's a matter of do. I did not think. Because the more I think, the more trouble I get into. Because, um, um, well, it's, it's really simple, that matter. Because if I start thinking about how I cannot live my own life, I cannot really be there for my mother. And so then it becomes something else, becomes something else. So I've learned to do what's needs to be done. Do it, don't question it. If, you, if it doesn't affect her negatively, or me negatively, mm -hmm. and it's supposed to be done, I just do it. I don't think about it. Just do it, just do it, just do it, and do it, and do it. And, and I found that that worked uh, to my benefit in many ways. That, that's, uh, that's where I could stand Coney Island for 12 hours at times so, <laughs> and just do it. Yeah, I just wanted to make one comment. Whenever I see these images, I always see them a lot larger than the size you were talking about. Um, I, I could imagine I, these. I've, 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 my mind isn't exactly, but I've, I've had it. It's, I had it larger than that. It's not. Mm -hmm. It's not. I'm just not focusing on, on, on size right mm -hmm. now. So, but it's been. You're, you're correct. You're correct. Mm -hmm. They've been quite large. I mean, like, you know, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. guess poster size. I guess what they call it. Mm -hmm. they, they've been. They've been quite. A quite, wall size. Quite, 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 not, 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 yet. Yet. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not really a. Not really a question, just a, a request. Um, before you go, can we look through them one more time? Yeah, sure. Just since we have, I, I since we have enough time. I want more. Julie, 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 I need help. Oh. I need help. Oh. Oh. You were saying that that you spend like twelve hours in a day. Yeah. But yeah. sometimes yeah. you spend twelve hours like five days in a row. Don't give them a secret, man. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll do better this time. Let's see something. Uh, is it is it an automatic or is it manual? Oh, no, I mean I can do it for you. But no, no, I'm just no, gonna no. run through them for a couple seconds each. Okay, all right. Yeah. 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 Okay, round two. Yeah. And if I go too fast, please tell me. I can't stress enough how much of an impact working in the series I've done have had on me in a sense. Want me to play? I'll play. Oh, I also wish to thank you guys for being so kind after all my uh, running through. Mm -hmm. So you didn't do any manipulation. This is what you no, saw. No, this is exactly what I what, what I saw. The idea is just uh, increase the contrast, well, we so, yeah. so that boost that. Yeah, there's no there's no there's no double exposure. No, like I said, single shot and camera and composition on location, nothing else. Well, uh, the, the, yeah, emotional. Yeah, I, I've mm, gone through a lot of similar things, so we can. No, because <laughs> the reason why okay. I think it's not that I'm at peace with it is that before my mother passed, I think it was a couple of days before that, 
there was a, in her bedroom, she called me in and uh, Sorry, just a quick recap, the question was whether Leslie finds it difficult to look at the images now, given what he's been through. Oh, sorry. sorry no, no, it was me. Oh, oh okay. Um, uh, so she called me and, and, and at that time her, her eyes were very clear. You can see that she was not uh, dementia somewhere that in the world. And uh, she took my hand and said, well, um, I know what you went through with me. And I thank you and love you. So I think in many ways that kind of release, because I know f with full certainty that I have done the absolute best that I could do within my understanding of what that is at that particular time each time. It's not to say I don't make mistakes, but I did apply myself and I did put her first. Uh, and and uh, so in that sense, uh, there is a release there that it doesn't, I've done my part. I, I, could not do any, I could not have asked any more of myself. I can honestly say that. That combined with the fact that she, she thanked me, and I think that kind of, which she probably knew as well, kind of released a lot of, uh, um, no, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's just work, it's not. Do you identify more with the pictures that have two people in them? You mean? The question is, do you identify more with the images that have two people in them? And I see there are mother and child in a number of these. Do you identify more with those? Is that sort of where you were going with some of this? No, it's not that I, I identified more with them or not. It's more for me part of the process of anyone or any uh, immigrants who come somewhere else. They tend to leave a child behind or leave somebody <laughs> behind. You make a sacrifice. to. All these things, um, they all filter through, not consciously at times, but they all come through, that they come, that I can see. Um, also, when I am uh, to photograph what's within the tide is extremely difficult <laughs> because the tide moves very fast. And what I mean is that you don't have time to really th think in a normal way. Because if your thinking is gone, uh, and the way I like to explain it, when I was asked before, is that the, the normal way of thinking, your conscious way of thinking, is unplugged. Uh, and any research I've done, anything I need, it's not that I forget them. And the best way I can explain it is that it's like everything I, all the information, even I've read, anything about that, it's like I, it's, it's stored in the cloud, you know? And as I'm taking the pictures, whatever bet, pertinent better information I need automatically download to inform that image. I don't see it until after when I shut off, when I, when I close, I'm, just, I'm, not, I'm not shooting anymore, and I start looking at the pictures. And then it's like at, at first they were compressed, I can zip maybe, that's, that's still there. and then when I'm looking at it, I can see, I can hear, I can see when that happened, I can see where it comes from, why I shot that, and so on and so forth. So it plays back that way, but it's not, but at the moment of shooting, I am not in that level, I'm not, I, am, I have to be here because I have to be take, pay attention to my peripheral vision, not even 180, one, probably 190 because I have to be concerned about what's coming behind, any kids coming, you know, try to play, that is really do. So a lot of things I'm keeping in mind, you're timing people coming in before they come into the space to give you an idea of what that might be. The tide is moving, so you're moving all the time. And I don't shoot it on automatic, it's just focused because this way I at least have a better chance of putting the focus where I want. Um, so all that, you don't, you can't, th you can't think in a normal way, at least not, not for me. It's not, uh, that, uh, so it's intuitive, it's a real intuitive Yeah, it, it's, it's uh, um, yeah, uh, yes it is, yes it is. Uh, and and, and uh, again, the best way I can say this, why I use the idea of uh, the information in the cloud, it's like, it's, 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 it's a direct download from, when the time comes to take the picture, again, like I said, whatever's important, whatever's pertinent, it automatically download itself and it will affect how I compose and what I do and how, what I go after, what I exclude or not. But it's not conscious in the sense that I can tell you that's what it is. Until after I finish, I can play it back mentally and I can see exactly what happened. You know, so. 
What's giving all the color like in this picture to the bottom of the water? It's, it's people passing by. That's, that's another thing as well with, with uh, the tide, which makes it impossible to control because the traffic of people, it, I can't tell them to stop, nor do I want to tell them to stop because then they become a different picture. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a matter of just staying with it. I would, at some time, I would track somebody. I would just follow them. When I, when I, sense, when I sense that it's there uh, for whatever the reason, and as I said before, I don't think. When, when, if my instincts say go, I just float. I just go. You know, and just go for it, and then it's the end. Um, um. I, I, I assume this is being recorded because this explanation by Leslie is invaluable because the highest art form in the highest uh, in every area of art, visual, uh, music, um, literature, it's that state that an artist reaches. Miles reached that state, where Bill Evans reached that state, where everything that has been accumulated, all the data, when it's time to release it, uh, with the picture, thinking is dangerous. Yes, it is. It yes. comes, flows. And L L Leslie's explanation should go out into the entire world. By, by, by the way, that's Herb Robinson, my mentor. <laughs> Hi, I, I really, really love your work. I just want to say I got related to all the emotion you have because I have my personal project, which is about me and my ocean story. Uh, yeah, and uh, so um, I know w what you can feel when you see the ocean. For me, it's like the poetry in my head. I write it with my camera. Right. Yeah. Okay. Keep, keep going. Yeah, I will. Thank you. Thank you. I yeah. really, really love your work. Thank you very much. Thank you for saying so. I wanted to thank you for giving us so much time the first go around to just look at the work. Regardless of what happened at the podium for you, Leslie, here in the audience for me, having this space, it was lovely to hear what you said and you introduced everything perfectly, but having that space to look at the images and be present with them was such a gift. Thank you. So thank you for that. Thanks for saying, thank you very much. Thanks for coming. Thank Last orders. Okay, um, Leslie has a separate website for the project, realityimagination.com. Go ahead and bookmark it when you get home. Um, and thank you, sweetheart. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.